only a couple days away from the uh, opener of archery season in a lot of states, especially here in Michigan. And I'm going to chat with you today on a topic that kind of relates to a lot of folks, maybe uh, more so in the Midwest. Uh, we have some of this here in the in the north or the northeast, but uh, not nearly as much um, as the Midwest, let's say, where I experienced a lot of this um, as a uh, just a young gun, if you will, moving from Michigan here down to uh, Pike County, Illinois years ago. We also had a uh, property in Calhoun County, uh, just south of Pike County. And if anybody is familiar with that area, that area is uh, river bluff, or a lot of it is river bluff or, or river or uh, uh, ridge country, bluff country. And this is something that you have to understand um, even on, so that's the extreme of it, uh, you know, Calhoun County, uh, Southwest Wisconsin, um, South Central Wisconsin, any of those areas uh, along the uh, Mississippi, along the Wisconsin River, along the uh, here in Michigan, we see it sometimes along the uh, the uh, Muskegon River. Um, any anything that gives you contour that really gets those ridges those, or that bluff country going. Um, and so I'm going to tie it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to tie a couple of these things together. We're going to we're going to take an examples here, and we're going to talk about how to hunt um, ridge country with winds and understanding thermals and how they play into it. Now down in the Midwest. Obviously, it's more like we said, it's more ridges and, uh, you know, down in like Calvin County, for example. It's more ridges, bluff country. Up here, we have swamps. So we're going to mix this up today. Like I said, we're going to actually do a combination so we can kind of uh, use a couple different regions here and including the Northeast because you do see a lot of this and you get up towards um, uh, New York, Northern New York. Um, uh, New Jersey's got a lot of this and um, Vermont's got a bunch of this. So we're going to uh, tie, tie them together and we're going to talk about understanding and really appreciating the uh, importance of knowing um, how to hunt the wind and your thermals together. So, so I set this up today and we're going to chat about, you know, understanding these on side access like we always promote from the outside in. How do you, you know, how do you pick? You always hear in ridge country, you always hear hunt high in the mornings and you hunt low in the evenings. And what folks mean by that is in ridge, ridge country or bluff country, anything with a lot of contour is if you're above the trail in the morning and your wind, wind is in your first step, let's say your wind is in your face, your side accessing from the east, your wind is in your face and you have a northwest wind or a west wind and you're on the, the ridge, just over the crown of the ridge, let's say, and you try to keep clean air so you don't go too far down over the ridge. The farther you go down over the ridge, the more of a chance that you have the uh, the canopy and stuff behind you to start messing with your wind uh, currents, and then you can start getting loop loop winds that we'll talk about here in a second. But what they what they mean by that is you hunt above the trail, above your mock scrape, above your water hole, uh, above your transition area in general in the mornings because your wind uh, keep your wind in your favor, and then also your thermals are raising, and in the evening they say to go. To hunt low, let's say if we're accessing over here, and we're you know we're accessing up the side of the our, our property line, and we're we're trying to get in between, uh, we've got a morning set, let's say, and we we access right straight in, and this this line from north to south, guys, is um, is the ridge top. I ran that out all the way on here, and I'm going to show you a couple different situations, but this is this is an example. This ridge, let's say you have a ridge that runs the entire, it might break a couple of times. If it does, the saddles, that's obviously, you know, you can use them in your favor. But let's just say you have a this ridge, um, oak ridge or, you know, hard maple ridge, whatever that is, uh, depending on where you're at in the country. You know, this runs the entire length of your property from north to south. So that's the peak, that line represents the peak of the uh, the ridge. So when you're, side, when you're accessing from the side, you're walking up the hill, which is great on this situation because your, your side access and the wind is dumping over the top of the, the uh, hill. You're walking into the wind. You're hidden from the ridge. This is, you know, whether it's very steep or just rolling, whatever the case is, you're walking up your east fence line here and accessing in, and that's hidden. And those those properties just don't um, happen overnight, you know what I mean? You don't, or you don't find those every day, let's say. Um, but if you got that situation, I was on a 40 last week that has this, and that 40's got ridges all the way around it. And you want to talk about a powerful, powerful piece. But this is a uh, this is a situation to keep in mind is when you're accessing, like we were saying, from the east. So your stand location here would be would be here. 
you'd have one stand location here and it's on a west or northwest wind or west wind blowing across. So this represents a food plot. We got some, the DB is our dough bedding up here. We got ag to the north and this, uh, this ridge top. So we're accessing, we're walking up the hill. We're going over the, uh, this is actually the peak. So this, the stand would be, the stand would be in here. Let's say I should move this, uh, I should move this down because we want to be, we want to give ourselves enough room here that I can show you. So the ridge runs like this. So this is the trail between the food plot and the dough bedding area and you know throwing some swamp in here throwing a little bit of northern mix in here if you will we're going to talk about lowland as well so we got a swamp in here and that swamp and that nasty tag elder swamp and stuff just happens to be it's pretty much in the center of your property let's say and you've got which creates the the uh, thing that we all we all look for is a pinch point right a funnel so this is actually, they, they love to use that, that uh, side ridge, uh, you know, a quarter, quarter of the way down, halfway down a ridge. And, uh, and then we have to place ourselves accordingly. So this, this uh, swamp here just represents, um, you know, we're throwing, throwing ridges in, we're throwing swamps in here. Uh, so this transition area comes in, it funnels them right past you. So they're up on the side of this and maybe there's a bench there, let's say and uh, it funnels them right back in, and then you've got some secluded on the, the, the south side of that uh, swamp, we've got some secluded buck bedding down in here, BB, we've got some secluded buck bedding. So this funnels them right through here. And this sounds like, man, this would be the perfect property to find, and yeah, right, where are we supposed to find one of these? And they, they're out there more often than not, but we're gonna talk about in, the, in down there, especially in the Midwest, what gets guys in trouble. So. This situation here, back to the stands guys, so the ridge top here, we're climbing up, we're, we're heading to the east, we're climbing up the hill, we get to the top of the ridge here, we crown the top of the ridge, because obviously the, uh, you know, the majority of the time your trails aren't on the top of the ridge, they're going to be just off the, like I said, you know, if there's a bench there, that'll, that'll focus their attention a uh, quarter of the halfway, uh, but I, I want to keep this stand not halfway down the ridge, I want to keep this stand, and hopefully that trail is is uh, and there's some habitat improvements and stuff that you can do to benefit this which is a different video but i want to keep this stand uh, a quarter of the way off the top of the ridge if possible and the reason for that is guys is like we said is if you get this stand too far down in here then what happens is is you're you don't have clean air so in other words when that drops off we're, we're going to the east we're getting to the top of the ridge and then you're going down into the stand, you're heading to the west, and you want, only want to go down there about a quarter of the way, because the farther that, that that stand location, that tree that you pick is down that ridge, and then you're, so you're still east of the trail, you get going down that ridge, obviously the back, the back, if, if you're 15 foot up in the stand, you might have to go 20 foot up, so you're not eye level if something does happen to come behind you, um, hopefully not, but if something does try to come behind you, they're eye level, uh, and another, the biggest reason is, is it's, it blocks clean air. So when you've got that good north or northwest wind coming in, you want that air to be able to get gone. You want it to be able to get go, gone over the top and down into non-deer area where you walked in from. And preferably right exactly where you walked in, not, not quartering winds or anything. If you can get it to dump uh, right back over where, where you came in, that's a perfect situation. Um, so, so this is, this is the, the, the uh, thing we're going to chat about here is keeping that keeping that stand here. Always remember, don't go too far down on the uh, on the on the first morning sit uh, stand here. This is a good morning uh, stand. Don't go too far down the ridge because what happens is is like I said that you know that ridge behind you is blocks clean air. That's one thing your contour. Then let's say in here in in Michigan, um, more so here than down in the Midwest. But since we're putting these two together, we're excuse me, we're gonna we're gonna put in. Um, we're going to put in some conifers and some pine that you had to walk through right up here to get into this you know so there's a pine here there's a pine there there's a pine there and as you know whether that's hemlock or pine or whatever that case is white pine especially if you have any of this stuff behind you guys on this north northwest wind when this wind's coming across the swamp and it's it's coming up and it's blowing that wind um you know consistent wind and it's blowing it up behind you and it's dumping it over the ridge if their um if your stand location is good the problem is, is you got to keep in mind is this, this uh, debris or this block behind you can really, really uh, cause some issues is because these, this acts as a, as a curtain, if you will, behind you on that ridge. 
And uh, whether that's the, and I, I love hanging tree stands uh, in like soft maples or something that's got two or three trees so your bow hangers out in front of you. But in this situation, you want that air to be able to get past you. And if these pines are located on the top of that ridge um, and your scent is going up that way and it sticks to those, it's not just gonna stick to them and then filter its way through. The stronger the wind, the more it will filter its way through. But what happens is these northwest winds, let's say, are coming at you here. And we're just going to bump it up here a little bit so we can see. This northwest wind is blowing in here, all the way through here. It hits this stand location. It comes up behind you, and it does this this effect here. So that's a curtain. It acts as a as a screen, and that that kind of for being that tight acts as a screen, and it turns and dumps this wind right back down in here. And then when it's here. It, it's fighting so you've got the you've got the wind currents already blowing the natural wind current now you've got stuff dumping into it and what happens is even that the even though that the thermals are raising even though the thermals are raising this starts trickling back down here we're going to put a scrape right here this starts uh this starts trickling down back down in settling back down in and it can't the wind can't physically push it up the the uh the normal wind current and then you're add, adding old um, you know, burnt wind back over top of it and then it's dumped down in there. So that's where you get yourself in trouble. So how do you cure it? What you do is you come up here with your pole saw and you poke holes in those in those conifers. If they're not mature conifers, cut them down and then use them as structure or something. Uh, but if they're either mature white pine, white hemlock or hemlock or cedar, or whatever that case is, trim them up, poke holes in them so that air gets gone. As goofy as it sounds, I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt and that's a good way to get that uh, you know spent wind or that burnt wind gone you can hunt this stand here in the evening on a hard northwest wind but that wind has to be that stand that we just poked there the wind has to be even more strong what happens is is this thermals um, these thermals start to sink that last half hour right when right when it's go time uh, that last hour last half hour the thermals start to sink and they are that thermal uh, power that force is is way more than than a lot of um, sustainable winds can can you know like we said you know burn that wind and get get that thermals gone they can't possibly beat the wind and they can't carry your, therm your thermals unless it's a very strong wind what a lot of folks do is they want to hunt this this location on an evening as well and they think well this is a swamp and and there's not a lot of activity through there it's it's got a lot of water in it and, and I can blow the wind across there um, if my thermals sink down in there, I'm fine, and because uh, the deer are moving through here. Well, this is what happens on a. This is the problem that I I see, and I the, the reason I don't recommend this is is what happens, guys, is you've got this you've got this line of travel through here with the scrape, and to access that, you have to go past your stand location, obviously, and we're gonna move this uh, down here so kind of you can see it better. Uh, it. You have to access this stand location. You have to bypass this stand location. You have to not only go past your scrape. You know, you hopefully your your trail camera's here, um, and then between your you know your scrape and your stand, and then you have to bypass the scrape. You have to buy. You have to cut the line of travel right here, and you have to come down and you know down in here. That twenty five yards from the scrape on the bottom is where a lot of these stands will be set. So that's the first mistake that I see happen, is you have to cut this line of travel. And to me, this is a morning, uh, a perfect morning stand situation, but it's also uh, a very powerful, because of the ag, because of your food plot, and then because of your bedding, it's a very uh, powerful transition, very powerful funnel. And to me, I'm not willing to give up the, a uh, powerful, powerful stand location like that um, and, and to cut that line of travel. The, the wind that you have to have to hunt that, if you're going to cut a line of travel, is going to be an east or a northeast wind, an opposite of what we're talking about here, to keep that wind down below, down below the the uh, trail. But if you're following this, what's what this occurs now is now you have northeast in this direction, and now we've got east. So now your winds are doing this. So now you've got the wind at your back coming down up over the top of this ridge. Everything is 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 uh, against you when you're walking down in there. It's floating down in there, and you're you're cutting the line of travel. Yes, when you get to that stand location, your wind is is uh, okay as long as you don't have a bunch of, you know, that's got to be a really wet swamp in order for the you know not to use it. Something that you have to pay attention to is don't try 
to enter these stand locations unless the wind is in your face the entire time you're going to those stands and not just when you're in the stand. So once you're here, yes, it's right, but crowning the top of that hill, if there's any deer in that transition area or in the swamp, you're going to blow it out before you get there. Once you're in the stand, yep, then, you're, then your transition area here, um, you're below it and you can hunt it. So that would be like a uh, northeast um, evening stand is because your thermals are going to sink and you're going to, your, your northeast wind is going to keep it down in there. That's people's thought. To me, I X this out. I don't even, I don't, I won't even go down this road because to me, it's not worth burning that, that great setup. And a lot of guys will try to do is because they're told in the morning, your thermals are raising and your wind is, it's okay to hunt this stand location um, on like a north or north, northeast, east wind here is because uh, your scent is blowing over the top of the deer's head. And to me, I, I won't risk that, those setups is because it's not worth to me risking um, the same theory that you have here is you've got down here on the swamp is these these uh, your your uh, wind currents are going down in and they're they're hitting those uh, curtains and that there's too much of a too much of a what if yes your thermals are raising um, the steeper that ridge uh, is the more you have a chance that that would go over top of their heads and not settle but how many times they've been in the tree stand and it's a 10 mile an hour wind and then it's a four mile an hour wind, then it's a 15 mile an hour gust, and then it's a and then it's a five mile an hour gust. And those situations in the fall happen all the time. And in a morning situation, but your thermals your thermals won't go up and down with the wind like that. Your thermals are a constant raise with the sun. They just slowly raise, and you're and that's that's keeping that thermal uh, you know heading from the ground to the sky or up that ridge um, as your ground warms. It's forcing those thermals up. Well, to me, you're, you're trying to take advantage of the thermals and then you're going against the grain and you're forcing, uh, you're forcing that wind down in there. So you got milkweed with you as a perfect thing to use or there's a lot of you know, scent wind indicators now that you can use that float. I like to refer to them as wind layers. So when you're trying to force that envelope of hunting this situation in the morning on the east wind, not only are you blowing everything down in there to begin with, which I don't recommend, you're... You're trying to, you know, hunt this location because it's so far down to it, you think that it's going over. Well, the, the, the scent layers, or the wind layers, they stack upon each other. And the, the more that you have the thermals helping you, the better. And that, that compresses your scent layers going over the top there. So you add wind to it, and instead of it being a scent, you know, the scent cone that we talk about going out behind you, this go, now, you're, now you're forcing it over the top. And it's it's the same way. Now, that that scent cone, guys, isn't o only horizontal; it's vertical. And if you take that vertical scent layer and you force that down into there, it has to be those thermals have to be very, very, very strong to get away get away with that. Do guys get away with it in the southwest Wisconsin, um, in the uh, in Calhoun County, Illinois, um, in Ohio is a perf another great location. Very, very, uh, you know. I'll have a lot of contour down in, in some parts of Ohio. Take that into consideration is it's not just your horizontal, it's your ver vertical scent layers that I like to refer to them as that I kind of that I kind of teach there. I don't know if there's if that's a, a term out in the industry or not, but that's what I use. It's scent layers. Just know that this is a morning sit on a uh, west or a northwest wind. It can also be an evening sit on a west or northwest wind. If you're up high enough on the ridge, you, you can take, you can cancel out the evening set if you have to go down, if this transition area is down far enough to get you within that 25 or 30 yard mark, 25, 27 yards to your scrape. If this stand location has to be that much farther down the ridge and now you're, now the ridge is up above you, then you cancel out the PM sits because you can't, uh, you don't want them thermals coming back down and, and you know, uh, costing you that evening hunt um, because of the wind is up and down and it's not consistent enough to keep those, um, to keep those uh, thermals working you know, with you. Because in the evening they, they settle, in the morning they raise. Anytime that you have to access the intern or you have to go through the inside of your farm to access an evening hunt is a recipe for disaster. You, you have to hunt from the outside in. You have to know whether you can, you can label that an AM or a PM hunt because of the thermals in the wind. So just remember folks that if, you're, if you've got one of these locations, 
and you're in ridge country and you've got some contour, don't don't give up the power or don't overlook the power or destroy the power of a of a stand location that's like this when you got a pinch point you got the ridge you've got the deer funneling back through there don't try to cut that line of travel just to have an am and a pm set uh, stand locations in the same spot and try to manipulate the wind versus the uh, versus the the uh, uh the thermals you want them both working in your favor together the object is, is to have the wind and your thermals working with you, not the wind working with you and the thermals against you. Um, if it's the, the ticket is, is to have them both pulling for you in the right direction. So you got two, two stand location options that I would look at in this situation. I would be coming in here, focusing my stand location somewhere in, you know, down in here further, knowing that you're not gonna blow that buck bedding area out. Hopefully there's a lot of structure and stuff there, something you can get in and out of quiet. That's where I would look at an evening set for. And then I'd also go up past this on these same winds. I'd go up past this again as if that ridge trickles out up in here and goes down before it hits the ag fields. Uh, I would be down in here on the on the more flat side, uh, you know, pulling these these bucks around the the doe bedding that aren't going into the doe bedding that are you know uh, scent checking it from the outside because that north and northwest wind is giving them all the information that they need. They're going to come out here and around it and go into this and this is where a stand location i would look for a stand or an evening stand location where you don't have the contour uh working against you if you don't have that wind block you don't have that curtain up behind you to worry about that we had here with the conifers that is a uh, a perfect evening uh situation where when that th that last half hour hour of daylight and then thermals start dropping here you're on a level playing field and uh, it's not, it, you're not going to have to beat that. Now, if your whole farm is, what, what do you do if your whole farm is, is ridge country or, or all contour? What do you do? Um, the evening, evening sits on those contours, you just have to remember, is if you have to access them from the internal of your farm, look elsewhere. You have to find an evening sit that is either high, high on a ridge, high up on a, a ridge, so your thermals, uh, in a saddle where you can keep the deer out in front of you, so your so when your thermals uh, uh, sink, they're they're sinking off to the uh, on this situation they would be pulling off to the east. They're not pulling back internal of your farm. Make sure that when that when them uh, thermals are pulling, they're pulling to the outside. Not they're pulling. They're not going to be pulling your thermals to the inside if that you know helps. Um, so in the morning, in review here in the morning. Make sure don't don't go too far over the ridge. Make sure you got you keep some clean air. You know you got some canopy up here, some curtains behind you, poke holes in it. Let that you know that expense or that burnt uh, wind get away from you. And evening is is, is to find a uh, a lower plane uh, a lower plane situation, or in here where maybe this ridge is is still up and your stand location is now on this side of the ridge instead of that side on the internal, because like I said, you don't want your thermals dumping, especially in this situation, where they'd be dumping down in towards the food plot. Remember that if you're if you're going to try to beat the wind in a morning situation and you're gonna go against the wind is because you're told that your, your thermals and your wind will go over the top of deer and the thermals will keep them away from them. Make sure that your, it's really, really steep situation and make sure that there's nothing down here internal that you're gonna blow out because if you, a lot of times that I see those those situations happening is is uh, if you do get away with it in that situation, like I said, I'm, I don't recommend that. You know, there's some guys out there watching this that are some hunters out there watching this that will say, hey, you know, I do this all the time uh, in ridge country. the The problem with that guys is you got to remember where this is going. What are you What are you blowing out of of internal of the rest of your farm? Uh, what's the evening um, hunt look like? Uh, what are you what are you going to be left with if, if you saturate that area because like I said at some point that scent or those scent, scent layers will fall down into that property take all that stuff and make sure that they all work in the same direction not one is a what if or I think I can overpower it or um, that's where ridge country uh, setups with the wind uh, can get you into trouble thanks guys